guys, welcome back to my channel. So today my goal was to bike to an ob shop and also a used bookstore um, quite a bit down the coast um, to just get out of the house. Um, but it has been raining non-stop. So instead I'm changing up my plans and today I'm going to do a try a chapter book tag. So um, I have never done this before, um, on video anyway. Um, and since we are at the end of August, I'm actually nearing the end of my newts. And what I need to do is read a book with the bird on the cover. And I actually have five books with birds on the covers that are also by Australian authors. So I was trying to decide which one I should read um, because I have like maybe three or four days to read it. And I wanna make sure that I choose one that I'm really excited about. So um, I'm just gonna throw up the options really fast and then I am going to go ahead and read on my lovely reading chair, which I guess I haven't shown you guys that much, but yeah, this is my lovely reading chair and I love it so much. Um, and so we're gonna have a good little reading session. So the first book up is The Swan Book by Alexis Wright. This, this imagines a future where aboriginals are still under the control of the North and it's kind of a futuristic dystopian society set in Australia. I have heard really polarizing things about this. This was one of the book club picks for the book club in my area, like before I moved here. So when the library was giving away 10 of these, I thought to pick one up for just a dollar. Um, and I am unsure if I will be able to get into it or if I will have to DNF it, like I'm not sure. So it seems like people either love it or hate it and we shall see, I'm gonna try the first chapter. Um, another one is My Sister Rosa by Justine Larbalestier. Here you go. Oh yeah, so the bird on this one was obviously a swan. <laughs> and this one looks like a little chickadee. Um, this is following a brother whose sister's name is Rosa. And she's very talented, very beautiful, very pretty, except for the fact that she may be a psychopathic killer. And it's basically like, what would you go, what would you do and what lengths would you go to to save your family member or your sibling from being discovered? And I think it sounds really dark. I think it's kind of a new take or like a very unique take that I've never read before on kind of the whole, we need to talk about Kevin or baby teeth situation of the evil child where um, if you don't know about those, um, I recently did a, if you like this, you'll like this. I will leave the link for that down below. Um, I've had some great feedback about that video. So if that was you, thank you so much. Um, I have already filmed another one and I will film more in the future because I really love those. Anyway, um, that's this one. Next up, I don't know if it needs any introduction. It's Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This is a raven, probably a raven or a crow. Um, this follows Mia Corvier, whose family is murdered when she is 10 years old, and then she goes to basically an assassin school, and I know that this is super popular, I've just never read it. A part of me is a little scared to read it because, um, I kind of get addicted to books that I really like, and then I get crazy and I need to read all of them all at once, um, so, um, yeah, I think that there's like three or four maybe books in this series so far, so... <laughs> Might be a problem if I really love it, but I'm really excited to get to it. Okay, next up is Resurrection Bay by Emma Viskick. Viskick, yeah. Um, and this is following Caleb Zellick, who is deaf since early childhood, and he is going out to solve a murder, I believe, of one of his childhood friends. So this, I'm getting major The Dry by Jane Harper vibes, where, um, a now detective is called to kind of investigate the murder of a childhood friend. Um, and I, the reason I picked this up is because I borrowed the second one, which is called And Fire Came Down from my uh, step aunt. And I didn't realize that it was the sequel. So I need to read the first one first. And this one, I don't, it has a very tiny bird, if you can see that. So I think it's a raven crow pigeon. There's more on the back as well. So not the hugest bird, but still counts. Okay, and then here is the last one. This is Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. This is everywhere right now. It's won like literally all of the awards. Um, I wanted to pick this up for my library. However, the waiting list is so long that I wouldn't even get it till like three years from now. So when I was in Big W, which is kind of like Australia's Walmart-ish, 
Um, this was on sale for $10 and I was like, oh my god, yes, give it to me. So this one I think as well is a little chickadee or sparrow. I don't know, I'm not really up on my, my birds, but um, definitely a bird as well. So I am going to read the first chapter of each of them and I will give you guys an update. So I will be right back. I have an update on the swan book. So I read the first chapter, or I guess it's the prelude, but I'm gonna count it as the chapter. Um, it's written in first person and a very chaotic voice, I must say. I'm not sure how much I got into it. Um, I think out of five, I would give it like a, mm, two and a half, three out of five for how interested I am. Um, mainly the first chapter we're following an unnamed main character who has a virus in their brain, but it's written really disjointedly and I couldn't figure out what they were talking about. Um, so I'm sure that that will clear up as time goes on, but honestly, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that exciting um, for me and I found that I didn't connect with it and I was just really confused more than anything. So um, not the most auspicious beginning. Um, so we're going to switch it up with one that has <laughs> high marks and we're going to do Boy Swallows Universe. I realized that I didn't tell you guys what this is about. Um, it takes place in Brisbane, 1985, and it says a lost father, a mute brother, a junkie mom, and a heroin dealer for a stepfather, and a notorious crim for a babysitter. It's not as if Eli, Eli Bell's life isn't complicated enough. Um, so he is falling in love and he's trying to stay on the straight and narrow, but he's also planning to break his family member out of jail on Christmas, I think. <laughs> so this has been recommended to me by like many, many people in Australia that I know, um, as well as has got rave reviews. So let's see how it goes. Bobby, you stole my spot. Can you come here? Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Hey guys, I just read 16 pages of Boy Solo's Universe, um, it's the first chapter, and compared to the last one, this one is has such a tighter writing style, and it also has some dreamy elements in it, but I found myself much more engaged. So on the interest scale, I give it 4 out of 5. Um, so we are following a main character who is kind of viewing his different family members and also like his babysitter who is known as the taxi driver killer um, and it is a day in the summer when he's learning to drive and his mute brother is signing words into the sky um, and he finds out that his mother and her long-term boyfriend are probably most likely heroin dealers for Vietnamese restaurants. Um, so a lot happened in the first chapter. Um, I found it really engaging and I really like the writing style and the voice and I also find myself um, wanting to know what happened. So um, I think that this one will be one of the top contenders, I think. So the next one that I'm going to give a go is My Sister Rosa, which is the like potential psychopath little sister. So I'm going to give that one a go. And also, my dog, Jackie, has been cuddling me, and it's so adorable. I love him so much. So we're going to give this one a go, and I will get right back to you. So I just read the first chapter of My Sister Rosa. Honestly, my interest level is 5 out of 5. It is creepy and weird and I think I'm going to freaking love it, honestly. So the first chapter 
we are following a family who is moving to New York City and they're on the airplane and they're in business class and the brother is Che is looking after his sister Rosa and basically he's just trying to keep her from doing anything bad and when I say bad I don't mean like she's just acting up like that she's actually gonna do something and there's just something about being stuck in a plane that makes it so creepy but we get a really good taste of their family dynamic and also just how creepy, like manipulative, um, multifaceted of a personality Rosa has. And I am just like in love with it, honestly. Like, oh, I'm getting major like baby teeth vibes. And I, wow, <laughs> I just really want to just read it right now. So <laughs> I am actually going to read the first two chapters from the remaining two books, which are um, Resurrection Bay and Nevernight, but I like five out of five interest in this one, which is unexpected um, because I was thinking that Boy Swallows Universe would be like my most, in my most want to read, but this one is by far like super creepy and I'm just I want to read it right now, so <laughs> um, yeah, we shall see if another one beats this one, but I'm really happy that one is catching my interest like so immediately, so yeah. And switching gear, I'm going to go ahead and read Resurrection Bay right now. So this is the one about um, the man whose childhood friend was murdered and he is going to investigate and he is also, what's it called, profoundly deaf. So he does wear, I think, a hearing aid, but he's mostly deaf. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give this a go and I will let you know. Um, also, my baby boy has completely stolen my spot, so I'm just gonna go ahead and have a little read right now, so yeah. All right, so that was super fast. The first chapter in this is only five pages long, um, but I am hooked. It sounds like a really engrossing thriller. Um, the writing style is really good. I really like when thriller writers keep things really short and like fast paced, and that seems to be the case here. Um, like I said, we open up and the main character is holding the bloodied body of his friend who has been executed and then he calls an ambulance and the police come and they are kind of talking to him and asking him what happened and then he's kind of going into shock and the things around him start to blur. Um, I am really, really intrigued by this one. I give it four and a half interest stars. So um, I will definitely be reading this one as well. I mean like after my sister Rosa, but Yes, also very keen for this one. Um, the, the writing style seems a lot to me like um, Jane Harper and Gillian Flynn. So um, if I find a new thriller writer that I really like, then that will be an amazing thing. Um, I usually don't read thrillers, but I have read a few this year. And I guess I like thrillers if they're written in a certain way. So like where the Chalkman was like slow and more of a character study, I like it, I think more when it's like chopped up bits of narrative that are really fast and there's a bunch of like red herrings and you're trying to figure out which one rather than it being really um slow and like focused on the different characters so um yeah i'm really interested in this one okay and i saved the best one the most popular one the one that i think is just going to be a fantastic fantasy escapism moment for last. So I am going to go ahead and read the first chapter from Nevernight. Um, I've been really into fantasy. I just did the Femme Fentale Readathon um, hosted by Jean Bookish Thoughts and that was great. I read a lot of female written fantasy um, and fantasy just was what I needed because I think in the beginning of August I was reading all um, non-fiction or depressing Australian outback fiction. <laughs> so they were all pretty like melancholy and really really dark. Um, so the fantasy was a nice, um, kind of refreshing week, I guess, of fantasy reading. Although, of course, they were mostly dark as well, but something about the fantasy element just made it 
better. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get stuck into this. Um, and I will give you guys my final update in a minute. So yeah, bye. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished the first chapter of Nevernight. It was like 13 pages and interest level is at four. So there are some things that I love and there are some things that are really annoying. So um, let's start out with the things that are really annoying. So first off, um, I tend to find that Jay Kristoff's writing style uses a lot of adjectives, adverbs, and repetitive phrases. So for instance, anytime gray is mentioned, what shade of gray may you ask? Mortar gray. I think he says that at least four times within 12 pages um, to the point where I was like, okay, I get it. It's mortar gray. We, what color? Mortar. Yes, mortar gray. That color. Yep, that one. So not in love with that, honestly, but that is something that I find with a lot of YA writers. Um, that that writing style is more common for some reason. Um, and the other thing that I found slightly annoying was the direct uh, repetition, which I understand is like to juxtapose the two different the two different beginnings. So we're watching a girl have sex for the first time, and we're watching her, I think, kill a man. And the way that it's phrased is like directly paralleled back and forth. And I really hope that that is only in the first chapter because if that continues the whole book, I don't know if I would be able to finish it. Um, Cause it is a pretty unique writing style, but it also spoils like what is happening in the second telling, if that makes any sense. Um, but the things that I do love about this are obviously Jay Kristoff's writing um, is very dry and sarcastic and witty. Um, and I also really like his world building and also his um, plotting is usually pretty tight. So um, yeah, interest overall four. Um, I'm hoping that the first chapter was a bit of a one-off in terms of um, how it was set up and also that uh, mortar gray is not <laughs> continued to be used. Although <laughs> I'm like almost 100% positive that it will be. So um, if I, when I do end up reading this, because I, I will end up reading this, um, I will let you know how many times mortar gray is used. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a final recap of how I found all of the books that I read the first chapter from. So the last one that I'm interested in is the Swan Book. Compared to the other ones, it's kind of a chaotic mess, um, which I think is quite confusing. So I'm probably not going to read it at all for this challenge. Then Boy Swallows Universe, which I was expecting to be at the top of this list, but actually is, you know, not. Um, then Nevernight, which again, I thought would be higher, but um, there were just a few things in the first chapter, which I think put me off. Um, then Resurrection Bay, which was better than expected, honestly. Um, I've never read the author before and um, much better than expected. And then My Sister Rosa, which will be what I read because I want to read it right now. And probably I will start it tonight once I finish some of my work. So um, yeah, that wraps up my uh, read a chapter book challenge tag thing, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, that was actually so much fun and I'm really glad that I did it. So um, if you watched all the way to this point, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have found any books that you want to give a go, let me know. Or if you have anything to tell me about these books, let me know. Um, especially some of these, which I found more surprising or like less thrilling than I thought they were going to be. Yeah, so there were quite a few little like, I don't want to say upstarts, but like, um, yeah, the results were much different than I anticipated. So I'm really happy and I'm going to go read them now. And I hope that you guys are having an awesome end to your August. And I'm going to get back to work and then read on to finish up my news. So I will chat to you all later. Bye.